This case involves what is probably the creepiest voicemail I've ever heard in a true crime case. This is the case of Henry McCabe, and before I start, my name's Sylvia, welcome to my true crime channel, and if you're a returning subscriber, then an extra special welcome to you. If you like true crime, then hit the subscribe button, and let's get into it. 32-year-old Henry McCabe was a Liberian immigrant, husband, and father of two living in Moundsview, Minnesota. He worked in the Minnesota Department of Revenue as an auditor, but lately hadn't been feeling great about his position and his job. He'd recently gotten a bad review. On Labor Day weekend in 2015, Henry was excited to go out with his friends and not have to worry about work or bills. He went clubbing with his two friends, Calvin Johnson and Pappas Kennedy. Pappas was a nickname, by the way. I forget what his official first name was, but you'll see him written as Pappas. At the club, Henry was pounding drinks to the point where Calvin felt it necessary to take away his wallet so that he couldn't buy himself more. I do find this odd because Henry was described as being stressed about money, so it's kind of irresponsible of him to go out and buy all of these drinks that are unnecessary when he's already drunk. But then again, maybe he was just kind of like binge drinking because he was so stressed. At 1.40 a.m., it was time for everyone to go home and Pappas was going to drive Henry back to his place, meaning Henry's house. But Pappas said that Henry asked to be dropped off at the Super America gas station. And later on in the investigation, police could not find any trace that Henry was ever here. And security cameras actually confirmed that this wasn't the Super America gas station. It was instead the Holiday Gas Station, a 10-minute drive but roughly an hour and a half walk to where Henry lived in Moundsview. And we don't know if Pappas purposefully misled the police or if this was just simply a mix-up. Maybe he'd had a little bit too much to drink as well, so he just wasn't remembering correctly. But a very, very valid question in this case is, one, why would he lie about where he dropped his friend off? And two, if Henry was as drunk as they described, why wouldn't you drop him off at home? He's drunk, he's alone, he's in public like a few miles. Even the gas station that he was originally dropped off at was pretty far from his home. So why is he being dropped off in this situation? And then also because Henry had had his wallet taken away, they're also like completely screwing him over. Calvin was the friend who took away Henry's wallet and Pappas is the one who dropped him off. So maybe this was just a miscommunication between the two friends. At 2.23 a.m. on September 7th, 2015, Henry's brother received a missed call from Henry that was accompanied by a voicemail. You'll often see this incorrectly reported as Henry's wife, Kareen, receiving this strange voicemail, but it was actually Henry's brother. And I watched an interview with Kareen where she said that this voicemail was left on his brother's phone. At first, this seemed like a pocket dial, but upon listening, this was no ordinary missed call. You can listen to what sound like Henry or some kind of weird creature screaming and moaning. But I was able to get the full voicemail of the audio that Henry McCabe left prior to going missing. I'm going to play that for you now, but just be aware that it's extremely creepy. Shout out to Nick. He's another YouTube creator. I'll link to his channel. He was able to contact the Minnesota police and get the audio.
the growling and gurgling almost sound inhuman. And it does seem like maybe he's in or near water, but you can definitely tell that he's in some kind of pain. It's scary to imagine how or why a human would even make those sounds. And Henry's wife even suggested that perhaps he'd gotten drugged at the bar that he was at. No possibility that he left the country. He didn't have a passport. The latest clue McCabe left behind is a troubling, hard to decipher message. I'd wondered if something had been put in his drink. A message left on his brother's voicemail. His friends say that he'd been drinking really heavily and maybe he was acting so drunk because he'd gotten drugged. Because I know that some people... Um, I know who I've spoken to who've had something slipped in their drink at some point say that they had like two cocktails, but they were like slurring their words and unable to stand up. Looking at what I had written down prior to hearing the full audio, it's honestly a game changer because I had so many notes that I'm now second guessing. First of all, Corrine said that when she listened to this voicemail, at the beginning she can hear him say Pappas and police, and then at the end there's a male voice saying stop it. That doesn't sound like Henry. Maybe I don't hear anything because I'm deaf in one ear, but let me know what you guys think in the comments because I don't feel like he's saying those two things at the beginning. I can maybe hear the voice saying stop it, but even then, people online were saying that the person saying stop it doesn't sound like Henry, but it kind of sounds just like it blends in with the rest of the voicemail. I actually do think that it sounds like Henry. But his wife did confirm that she could hear her husband talking in the voicemail. She said, quote, He said certain words like, they are afraid. One word he said was police. The other word that he said at the beginning of the audio was papas, which was the friend who dropped him off. And then another thing that I find so weird is if this audio does have actual talking in it, then why would the portion released be just the groaning? Wouldn't the public benefit more from hearing what's actually being said? Wouldn't that lead to more tips and someone potentially recognizing the interaction and maybe hearing like a friend's voice if there are two voices in it? It just makes no sense to me that if someone's saying police or someone's friend's name, why the released audio would just be growling. It's also notable that Henry's phone stopped pinging right after this voicemail was left. So it was either turned off or it died or maybe it got wet. The last pings from Henry's cell phone indicate that he was in the vicinity of Creekview Park in New Brighton when he disappeared. And the case of Henry McCabe was initially a missing persons case for several weeks. Then, in November of that year, a kayaker discovered Henry's body floating in Rush Lake. And this was an area about six miles from where he'd been dropped off by Pappas. Because it had taken so long to recover the body, the autopsy was difficult to do due to the advanced state of decomposition. It took several days to get the report, but eventually the Ramsey County Medical Examiner released Henry's cause of death as a freshwater drowning. So maybe the growling in that voicemail was Henry actually drowning. This was like his final call out to his loved ones to let them know that his life was ending. While some suspect that Henry got drunk and wandered into the water, others suspect that this was foul play. Because of the advanced state of decomposition, it was hard to tell if there were any puncture wounds or scratches in Henry's skin or flesh, so it's really hard for anyone to discern if he was attacked prior to this. There's so many theories in this case, even leading all the way up to this being a government conspiracy. Henry's friends drew a lot of scrutiny. First there's the thing with the wallet, then there's dropping him off and how the story changed. But while I do think Pappas is pretty sketchy, I do want to jump in and defend him for a second. When you're out drinking, I feel like some people, when they get drunk, they want to venture off by themselves. And it's so interesting because in the true crime world, you'll see that people will be like, oh, how dare they leave their drunk friend alone? Or, oh, they left him at the club and they went home. Or like, oh, they dropped him off. Sometimes when you're out drinking, people want to be alone. People want to leave. And sometimes they'll get really aggressive when you try to do the right thing and keep them with you. But sometimes there's just really no stopping it. So phone records showed that Henry made three phone calls before he died, and one was to his brother, one was to Corrine, and I don't know what the third one was to, maybe he called one of those people twice. 
and investigators requested Pappas Kennedy to give them his phone records so that they could see the location and where he was in relation to when he said that he dropped Henry off. But if this search warrant yielded any significant results, those have not been released. One of the distinguishing words on Henry's audio was supposedly Pappas, and I think it's notable that Henry was making this voicemail to try to convey to his brother that maybe that's how he got into the situation, like Pappas had dropped him off, or maybe he was indicating that Pappas was an important player in the story. So after hearing this voicemail, and especially after Henry didn't show up at work, Kareen called the police. And while Henry was still missing, she was questioned by the police about what could have happened to him, and Kareen suggested that maybe he'd run off with another woman to start a new life. And police found this pretty suspicious. I mean, what's going on in their relationship to where she would suggest that that's a genuine conclusion that you could come to in this case? So Kareem was out of town at the time of Henry's disappearance slash death, and you'd think, oh, that means she can't have anything to do with it, but in true crime, that can actually mean that it's even more sketchy because a lot of people will go out of town when they have a hit placed on their spouse so then they can be like, I had nothing to do with it. I was out of town. But the McCabe family was set to move from Minnesota to California, and Kareen had already moved to California with their two kids. So Henry was kind of like wrapping things up in Minnesota before going to California to join the rest of his family. And local police went on the record to say that Henry's wife, Kareen, was not participating fully with the investigation. They said they believed she wasn't being truthful and had given conflicting statements, even though Kareen has denied this. Honestly, after hearing the full voicemail, I am a bit more suspicious of Kareen. I always feel bad accusing someone's loved ones in cases like this, but I think it's weird that she's kind of like pushing the narrative that there was someone else there with him. And another thing I find really weird is that he was reported missing by Kareen after he didn't show up to work. And she heard this voicemail like that night. She went back to bed. And I'm just kind of confused as to why she wouldn't be more concerned, why it would take him not showing up to work to get her to file a missing persons report. There's literally so many theories in this case. By the way, I'd really love to hear what you guys think happened to Henry down in the comments. So let's talk about how this could be a cover-up from a police stop gone wrong. So going back to the audio, you hear this bizarre groaning. And if you watch videos of people being tasered, they make really, really similar kind of like gurgling sounds. Yes, Corporal! Taser, taser, taser! Ah! Are you ready? Yes, Corporal! Taser, taser! Ah, New York Yeah! Ah, ah, ah. Yeah! So maybe Henry was stopped by the police, he was belligerent and drunk and just wanted to get home and wasn't really listening to them. So then the police tased him and things escalated and Henry ended up passing away or at least going unconscious and to cover their tracks, the Minnesota police then put him in the lake. Something else I've seen reported is that Kareen said that in this voicemail, Henry said, I've been shot. And maybe that's relating back to the police because the police do have a history of shooting unarmed black men. But listening to this voicemail, if this is a police stop gone wrong, it is a very, very quiet police stop gone wrong. I feel like when you watch these videos, they're always yelling at the person. They're like, stop resisting. And this is so quiet. Like, if this was a police stop gone wrong, I think that you would be able to hear multiple voices in the voicemail. And quite honestly, I only hear Henry's and maybe like one other person. And that's going off the theory that this would be foul play. I don't think that this would be like a group attack. So in saying I've been shot, Henry could be talking about police with their guns, but they could also be talking about police with their tasers. When Henry was still listed as a missing persons case, his family feared that this was some kind of retaliation from the Liberian government. As I said, Henry was born in Liberia and he actually went to high school in Ghana. So he ended up moving to the United States as an adult. And his family was really worried that maybe he was being held somewhere by the Liberian government or if he'd been taken out on a professional hit. 
because he would frequently criticize the Liberian government. I admittedly don't know much about the political climate of Liberia, but in 2012, three years before this happened, the former Liberian president was sentenced to 50 years for war crimes, and there's also a travel advisory due to the high crime rate. Henry was extremely interested in politics and he loved listening to political debates. I mean, he did work for the government, so that makes complete sense. What's so frightening about the voicemail is that the gurgling sounds almost inhuman, and people have speculated online that maybe this is the sound of a wild animal, like a cougar that was like growling when attacking him, and again, because his body was so decomposed, sitting in the water for such a long time, it was hard to tell if he had any wounds. The true crime community is going to hate me for this, but I think that it could be possible that the death of Henry McCabe was simply an accident. There are lots of cases of men going out with their friends and then being found floating dead in a body of water. I covered one of these back on Halloween two years ago, and that's up on my channel, but he, this was also a Minnesota case, and he was found floating in the river in a really suspicious position that people felt couldn't have been an accidental drowning. But if someone's walking home and they're drunk, especially a man, and they have to pee, they might wander towards a body of water and try to pee into it. So Rush Lake isn't surrounded by like cliff sides or anything. It's actually surrounded by reeds and it's pretty easy to wade into the water. So that kind of adds credence to the theory that he was walking, he was starting to wade into the water and then eventually he was just drunk. Maybe his foot caught on something and he didn't have his balance. So he ended up like falling down and he was struggling in the water and that's when he made a phone call, but then his phone got water damaged and turned off. So now to bring in a theory that I don't usually talk about, some people think that the groaning could be supernatural in origin. Maybe he was abducted by aliens or maybe he ran into a Bigfoot. I don't really believe in those things. I think that there is plenty of horror in real life that has been verified by science that we don't need to bring aliens or monsters into it. But people think that because of those bizarre noises that maybe he was trying to capture a Bigfoot on audio so that he could show what he was being attacked by. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this case. Do you guys think that foul play was involved? Do you think this is a police cover up since Corrine and the police kind of seem to be pointing the finger at each other? I would love to hear what you guys think happened to Henry McCabe. Of course, I'm absolutely heartbroken that his two children now have to to grow up without a dad and that Corrine has lost her husband. That audio honestly sent chills down my spine the first time I heard it. I think it's so weird that he could be groaning like that. Some people have said that that's a death gurgle, but it just seems so loud and so violent to be that. But unfortunately, that's all the information I have for you guys on the mysterious disappearance and death of Henry McCabe. Make sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post both short form and long form true crime content. But thank you so much for watching my video. And until next time, have a great day and stay safe.